Federal Reserve is finally taking a step back from its quantitative easing program, and the problem is it's just kind of a baby step. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke announced the central bank will pull back ever so slightly on its assets purchasing program by buying only $75 billion worth of bonds and other assets a month instead of the $85 billion it's been doing. So basically, quantitative easing is here to stay, and the Fed is going to continue to add to its $4 trillion balance sheet. You heard me right, $4 trillion. That's with a T. Right now, the economy is addicted. It's, it's hooked on stimulus, and the only way to get the same high to produce positive growth results is to keep flooding the economy with even more of it. Sure, the taper has started, and the Fed is buying fewer assets, but there's no real end in sight. Janet Yellen, the woman handpicked by progressives to replace Bernanke, wants to go even further to address things like income inequality while continuing the easy money policies. The value of the dollar is already shrinking, and the government thinks the only way to create growth is even more stimulus. Eventually, it's all going to fall apart. Here to talk about this is friend of the program, Ed Batowski, the founder of Chapwood Investments. All right, here's a silly question. What could Fed policy possibly do to close the income gap? Well, I, I don't think Fed policy can do anything. I you know Fed policy is basically the discount rate, it affects the discount rate and the Fed funds rate. So to do anything about um, inequality, whatever that really means in, in terms of income, they have no say, they don't have anything they could possibly do. It's a kind of a silly you know, proposition. Okay, so what about the effect on the stock market? It seems like this is completely a false sense of growth here. I mean, yeah, there are some people who were right. in early, they're, they're able to watch some of these inflated stocks go up. And if you're a guy like uh, Buffett, you're probably, I mean, what did he make, $1.3 billion a, year, um, a day uh, for this year? It was a day or an hour, I forgot. But, I mean, for the average investor, this is an artificial sense of growth. Well, you know, Andrew, this is what I've, I've been in the investment business for 27 years, and I will tell you, and, and we're going to differ on this. You and I agree on a lot of things, but I think you appreciate me bringing, you know, my years of experience to this. And the Fed printing money has absolutely nothing to do with the stock market going higher. And there seems to be this game of telephone where everyone just repeats it, but if you really analyze it, printing of money does this. They go in and they buy a lot of assets off of the books of banks. And if you look at the $4 trillion on the balance sheet of the Fed Reserve, the majority of the growth since 2009 has been in mortgage-backed securities, the MBSs, okay? And there's something else called Maiden Lane, which is some money that went to bail out uh, Bear Stearns. But overall, that money never makes it into the economy, and it doesn't do anything for stocks. The reason stocks have gone higher, it's not artificial. These are real earnings, real growth, and the, and the people of the year is really your corporate executives and the people that work at these corporations because they are earning money. It's not artificial, it's real growth, and as interest rates start to rise, there's another thing that people don't understand, is that when interest rates rise and the 10-year treasury rises, multiples expand, and that's why you're seeing stock prices go higher because of earnings. Nothing to do with the Fed, Andrew, nothing. Yeah, but part of this was also supposed to bring down the unemployment rate. If the economy is growing, right. why, why are there 90 million people not in the workforce? Yeah, well, the economy's not growing. Oh. The stock market's going oh, higher, okay. but the economy's not growing. There's a huge separation between the two. And, you know, look, the, Fed, the, the government and its policies have done nothing to help this economy, all right? You know, it's the hardworking people in this country that have. In fact, I actually think the Obama administration and, and everything that they put in place has made the recovery slower. I think they're working against us, quite frankly. So wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait, I thought the Democrats wanted to crack down on the 1%. They wanted to stop uh, the yeah. power of the big banks. But it seems right. like this only benefits the big banks and Wall Street at a time when the Democrats said they wanted to end that, 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 that game. Well, I, I don't know about, you know about Wall Street. I mean, we want the economy to recover. We want the economy to do well. And sometimes, you know, 44% of the growth in our companies come from outside of our borders, which means, I can't do the math real quickly, but I guess about 56% of the growth comes from the earnings uh, you know, that, that are derived from inside our borders. Our economy is a very slow recovery. We should be substantially higher than we are in the stock market. And in terms of, uh, you, know, a, you know, enacting war on the one percenters, I think it's a joke. I have a brother-in-law that I posted some Something, uh, from the SIBO the other day, and he is a very far left, you know, leaning person. Uh, I guarantee you, he's not watching this show right now. Uh, but I'll send him the clip. And 
he still believes that the 1% isn't paying enough, even though the bottom group isn't paying any federal income tax. I don't understand what comes out of Washington, what they say, how the left believes we should grow this economy, and how they believe that the 1% should pay even more than they are. Do you think it's Crazy. dangerous that there's $4 trillion on the Fed's books? Yeah. Yeah. If you really start to look at that, the question is, what are they going to do with it? You can analyze those numbers and you know, I'll send it to you, Andrew, and you can post it anywhere you want. You can look at what that four trillion represents. You've got all those bad mortgages were bought up. Now, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You've got a lot of other things. The amount of treasuries that we own has actually shrunk. But you know why? Because we're just printing money and buying them and just basically they go away. I mean, Who, it, where did they a, get this idea that they could create growth out of the money supply? I mean, we were just talking with a previous guest about right. the Weimar Republic. I've got some Zimbabwe. You've seen my Zimbabwe currency right. here. I love it. Where, I love it. Where, where did they think? And I, you know, I want to say this, and this might sound controversial. I don't blame John Maynard Keynes. I blame Keynesians because Keynes said stimulus doesn't work when you have structural debt and deficit, and we have both. So here we are with structural debt and deficit, and we're devaluing the currency and borrowing more money. So as our debt increases and the time it takes to pay it off, and I'm so sick of this phrase, servicing the debt. We're not servicing anything. We're devaluing the money that we have, and the Chinese know it. Then they're the yeah. ones that hold the lion's share of our debt. Yeah, and, and people talk about... You know, we're not devaluing our currency. I, I was on a show yesterday talking about this, and the, and the gentleman interviewing me said, well, I looked at the numbers, and we're not devaluing. Well, we're not devalued against Europe because they're printing money. We're not devaluing against the yen because they're printing yen. Well, guess what? The Japanese... Um, uh, economy is the same exact size it was in 1992. So I will tell everybody who's in Washington, go look at Japan, because that's what we're becoming. We're not going to grow our economy by doing this. We'll grow it by cutting taxes and doing it the old-fashioned way. Good hard work like all corporate executives are doing right now to boost their stock prices and boost their earnings. But printing of money is not going to get us there. And Keynesian economics is an absolute joke. It's never been proven to work, and it doesn't work, and we've got to get out of this mindset. One one last thing, we've been, we've been hammering the budget here. It's going to spend more money. It's going to borrow more money. What do That's our right. creditors do when they know that our dollar is worth less and less and less? Yeah, they, 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 they punt. I mean, they hit, they hit the uh, Control-Alt-Delete button on the U.S. dollar, and they go somewhere else. And you know what? When that happens... You know exactly what's going to occur. We are going to have a depression worldwide. You're going to see it. It's going to start in Japan, by the way, because people are going to stop buying the Japanese debt. And all of a sudden, we're going to see a systemic problem, and it will happen. And when it does happen, you know what? It's going to be a very, very tough uh, 20 years, okay? And our children aren't going to be too happy about it. I'll oh, tell you I, that. I can't wait for amnesty to kick in. Thanks for joining me, Ed.